Okay, good morning, dear students. Uh, we, are like, we are lucky to have uh, once again uh, to have uh, Dr. Viswanath. Uh, so he's a scientist in vegetable science, ICR, CTCRA, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. So already he has delivered the lecture and uh, hope you have understood he has nicely covered in the last session and mostly and uh, in an exam point of view, he has covered. And uh, so once again, he, he will be delivering the lecture on this uh, vegetable science. So I welcome once again, because uh, we have given much introduction on the first class, this is a second class. Without wasting uh, time, uh, I'll hand over the platform, Zoom platform uh, to uh, Dr. Viswana. Yeah, please uh, carry on. Uh, thank you, sir, once again uh, for hosting me. Uh, and shall we go directly to the lecture, no, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, so, dear students, uh, good morning. Uh, last time we have seen uh, some major vegetables. Most of them are uh, warm season vegetables. Uh, leguminous, formaceous, cucurbitaceous vegetables. Except potato. Potato is a temperate vegetable. And the uh, remaining group of vegetables we will see today. Yeah, today I will be covering whole crops, root crops, bulk, tuba leafy and perennial vegetables and we also see some important points of uh, post harvest technology and uh, seed production of the vegetable crops. So last time I, ha I have told you what is the botanical origin and uh, what is the progenitor species. So this time we will see the progenitor species of uh, these crops. Uh, among all the species, the cabbage, cauliflower, uh, broccoli, Brussels sprout, all these uh, crucifers belong to the genus uh, Brassica and among all these crucifers, kale. Kale was the crop first originated. So kale and leafy non heady cabbage, they were uh, originated from Brassica Ulgaritia variety, silver trees. This is the primitive kale. From kale and non leafy heady cabbage, but originated from the primitive kale, Brassica Ulgaritia variety, silver trees. From this leafy non heady cabbage or head cabbage was developed. Whatever we are seeing in the market nowadays, the cabbage that forms the head, uh, that is head cabbage that was originated from leafy non heady cabbage. And savoy cabbage, savoy cabbage means where the leaves have curls. So the savoy cabbage, it was originated from Brasca, Ovasia, variety Costata, the common name Portuguese scale. And broccoli and Chinese scale were originated from Brasica, Critica, subspecies Nidia in Italy. Broccoli was originated in Italy, that's from Brassica critica subspecies Nivea. Cauliflower was originated from broccoli. Generally, we know much about cauliflower, less about broccoli. Uh, into India, cauliflower was introduced earlier and broccoli was introduced much later. So we think that broccoli is the new crop. No, in, gen, uh, in domestication or in the origination, broccoli was originated earlier and cauliflower was originated from broccoli. And Brussels sprout, Brussels sprout was originated from Brassica Algaritia variety, Ramosa, common name is Cowgen Head Care. And Mool Coal was originated from Brassica Algaritia variety, Midulosa, Narrow Stem Kale. And Onion was originated from Ilium Barbilobi. Similarly, Garlic was originated from Ilium Langicuspis. So, carrot from Queen Anne's Lace, Dacus Carota, subspecies Carota. And the Asiatic Radish originated from Rafanis Sativas variety, the Farnish Troides. Beetroot from Beta vulgaris subspecies Maritima and the grain Amaranthus from Amaranthus hybridus, spinach from Spinachia tetranda, lettuce from Lactrica cereola, potato. Uh, last time uh, I told you some confusion was there about the ploidy of the potato and the sweet potato. Potato, solanum, tuberosum is auto polyploid, it is auto tetraploid. But another cultivated tetraploid potato, solanum. Uh, Stoliniferum, that was allotetraploid. Uh, last time the confusion was there in last lecture. 
So tap water was originated from manufactured Escalanta subspecies Labellicoria and sweet potato was originated from Ibumetrida. Still there is a lot of confusion about the origin of sweet potato, whether it has come directly from the uh, Ibumetrida or it might have come uh, by the cross between Ibumetrida and uh, some unknown species. So if we see the important crops in the Crucifera family, a cabbage, cauliflower, mule corn, broccoli, Brussels sprout, kale, Chinese cabbage, and the Chinese kale. Uh, you please remember the botanical names. So this is a, this is generally called U triangle. This clearly explains how different species of uh, brassica were originated. So this is the uh, our brassica volvesia. All our vegetables belong to this group brassica volvesia. They are the half plant chromosome number is equal to nine, and the genome is CC. So, first they were Brassica repa, Brassica nigra, and Brassica ulvesia. From Brassica repa and Brassica ulvesia, natural hybridization, Brassica napus form. And from Brassica ulvesia and Brassica nigra, Brassica carinata was formed. And from Brassica, Brassica nigra and Brassica repa, Brassica gentia was formed. This is called U triangle. This explains how different species of Brassica were originated. So the geographical origin, if you see almost all these uh, coal crops were originated in the Europe near Mediterranean region, uh, cabbage in uh, Eastern Mediterranean region, cauliflower from Syria, broccoli from Italy, uh, Brussels sprouts from Belgium, and moon pollen kale from Mediterranean region, Chinese kale and Chinese cabbage were originated in China. But these coal crops were migrated to China by humans and there they were modified and uh, into Chinese kale and uh, Chinese cabbage. So broccoli was much introduced into India later in 20th century. Though it is an ancient crop, broccoli, though broccoli was the progenitor of cauliflower, to India it was introduced much later in uh, 20th century in 1990s. So we see the cabbage. Cabbage is a largely cultivated crucifer vegetable, and it has an anti-cancer property due to the presence of uh, uh, indole 3 carbinol. And there is one fermented product, a popular product from cabbage, salt rot. Uh, generally, the seamen when they go to fishing into the ocean, uh, they take they take this raw part and they eat it. Uh, Fermented product, so we can store it long time. Uh, it can be used to diagnose scurvy. Scurvy is with deficiency of uh, vitamin C, uh, so I wish that it can be used. And uh, based on the color of the cabbage head, uh, whether white color, red color, or savoy color, uh, different uh, forms are there. That's the old fish variety, capitata, form a alba, white color head, form a rudra, red color head, and variety saboda is the savoy cabbage. Savoy means the leaf circles. So, cabbage is a cross pollinator, or all crucifers, all crucifers are cross pollinated. Uh, that is due to the presence of uh, protogyny. Protogyny means the female parts come to uh, mature earlier than the male parts. Uh, so the dilution which is earlier than the androsium. Uh, this is cross pollination is due to protogyny and uh, it also has self incompatibility. Self incompatibility means self pollination may not occur. The pollen of the same uh, plant cannot fertilize the uh, ovules of the same plant. So that self incompatibility type is sporophytic here. That means the self incompatibility is down by the uh, somatic chromosome number of the parent. So the inflorescence of cabbage is catkin. This is very important because this is a unique inflorescence uh, among all the crucifers. Generally, crucifers have either cymos or racemos, but uh, the catkin is having the uh, sorry, the cabbage is having the catkin inflorescence. Uh, this is a very unique one. Uh, catkin means the inflorescence is drooping type. It droops, uh, and it means it is hanging type droops. Uh, so the flower of the uh, cabbage is due to presence of the glucoside semigreen and the two propenyl isoprenocyanate. And there is a male sterile system in cabbage for hybrid seed production. It is uh, cytoplasmic male sterility. The source of cytoplasmic male sterility is from Brassica nigra, and uh, it is an anon cytoplasm. Actually, originally it is from Brassica town 40. Brassica town 40 to the cytoplasmic male sterility was transferred to Brassica repa. From Brassica repa, it was transferred to uh, cabbage. And uh, based on the head shape, there are three types. Uh, head shape generally we can see as P by E. P means the diameter of the polar, that means from top to uh, bottom, and equatorial diameter, that means horizontal length. 
so the vertical length and horizontal length the ratio of the vertical length and horizontal length uh, it gives us the shape of the uh, cabbage head uh, if the p by e polar diameter by equatorial diameter ratio is 0.8 to 1 means it is a round head or spherical head if it is 0.5 to 0.6 means it is drum head or flat head if it is greater than 1 means it is conical head and the major crest of the cabbage is diamond black mark nutella gyrostella why it is called diamond black mark if you see the adult mark uh, back side there is a diamond mark so it is called diamond black mark so there is a classification of varieties in uh, cabbage early mid and uh, late based on the type time of sowing and based on the head type they are again classified into round flat and uh, conical so you can refer any textbook for the classification of all these varieties i have not given here and if cabbage is grown on the saline soils it is grown to black like this is black like this is caused by fungus poma lingam uh, the de breeding methods followed in cabbage were mass selection recurrent selection family breeding family breeding especially followed in the uh, whole crops uh, in whole crops family breeding is followed it is similar to the line breeding but the selection goes for more than one generation the family breeding is generally followed in whole crops Uh, so nowadays the hybrids are very popular uh, though less number of hybrids were developed by the public sectors but a huge number of uh, cabbage hybrids were uh, developed and uh, marketed by the private sector in india uh, and synthetics are another type of varieties developed in the cross pollinated crops especially crucifers among the vegetables generally synthetics and compound varieties are developed in cross pollinated crops uh, we take uh, inbred lines and we uh, allow the open pollination among the inbred lines and we will collect it. Uh, equal number of seed from the each parent we will mix them we will grow them this is a simple way of developing a synthetic seed so you can refer in the textbook for the detailed procedure of the developing a synthetic variety so the ideal number of inbreds for developing a synthetic variety are 4 to 6 uh, this is a previous question uh, is 4 to 6 you can remember this figure uh, ideal number of inbreds for synthetic development 4 to 6 So the synthetics are based on the exploiting the general combining ability and the elitogenic variation, whereas hybrids are based on the uh, specific combining ability and the non-elitogenic variation. You just refer in the genetics book what is the elitogenic and non-elitogenic variation. So the resistance to powder mildew is done by single dominant gene and the resistance to fusarium yellows. There is a two types of resistance in cabbage. The type A resistance was done by a single dominant gene. Whereas the type B resistance was polygenic, but uh, it breaks at 22 degrees centigrade. It is temperature uh, since P. So for developing the inbred lines in cross pollinated crops, we have to do selfing. So up to six to seven generations of selfing in a cross pollinated crop will give us an inbred, which is almost uh, 97 to 98 percent of uh, homogeneity. So there is self incompatibility. So we cannot do selfing in cabbage. So, for developing the inbred lines in whole crops, especially in cabbage, cauliflower, so uh, how for development of the hybrids, we need inbred lines because uh, the hybrid should have uh, homogeneity. So, to ensure the homogeneity in the hybrid, the parent should be homozygous. But the cross pollinated crops are heterozygous. So, we have to convert the cross pollinated crops into homozygous form. How we get the homozygous form is by selfing for six to seven generations. the homogeneous form of a cross pollinated crop is known as inbred so if there is self incompatibility in cabbage so how do we do selfing and how do we get the inbred uh, in cabbage so to overcome the self incompatibility there are three methods bud pollination bud pollination means before anthesis before opening of the flower we have to do pollination because the self incompatibility elements become active after the flowering when the flowering occurs the self incompatibility will come into operation before flowering there is the self incompatibility alleles will not function so before the flowering that means we at the bud stage 2 to 3 days before anthesis we have to do the pollination otherwise we can spray 3% sodium chloride 1.2 hours to 1 hour after the pollination or we can expose the stigmas to 3 to 5% co2 for 8 to 24 hours at 100% relative humidity these three methods can be followed to overcome the self incompatibility in cabbage so there are some important varieties like uh, posa agathi is a tropical cabbage set seeds in subtropics and the tropical varieties do not require vernalization they can set seeds in the plains and uh, posa sambandh is a synthetic variety uh, it is suitable for the high density planting because of the short stalk length and posa mukta is resistant to black rot the black rot was caused by bacteria jantomonas tempestris 
and both are drum head variety was restricted to black leg, which was caused by the fungus. And there's a Savoy cabbage variety, chief too. So the next important crucifer is cauliflower. Uh, Cornish cauliflowers were first introduced to India. Cornish cauliflowers were England. So the Cornish cauliflowers of England were first introduced to India. Afterwards, uh, other European types were introduced to India. Cornish, Roscoff, Italians, and Northerns. All these were temperate types. So how the tropical Indian cauliflowers originated? After bringing them here, there was a natural crossing among these European types and the selection by the farmers uh, for the uh, heat tolerance and uh, suitability for the adaptability for the, our Indian conditions. So by natural crossing and selection by the farmers, our tropical cauliflower was originated from the European types, especially the corn shown. So this tropical Indian cauliflower is having stable cells in compatibility, whereas the European cauliflowers were the thermosensitive because at high temperatures, their certain compatibility will be broken. So the inflorescence of cauliflower is racemos, whereas the inflorescence of cabbage is catkin, and the cauliflower inflorescence is racemos. So in Indian cauliflower, generally we prefer the semi-erect types than the erect types. So in the cauliflower, uh, male sterility was transferred in the cauliflower through the combinatory DNA technology. The Barnes gene governs the male sterility. Uh, the Barnes gene was isolated from the bacteria Bacillus amyloliquefaciens, and it was transferred to the Barnes gene. Uh, whereas the Bar gene is the herbicide tolerant marker gene, and the Foster is the destroyer gene. <coughs> like uh, like cabbage, uh, cauliflower uh, CMS was transferred to uh, cauliflower also. The CMS source in case of cauliflower is Ogura from Rafanas, and the same Anand from Vascular Ripa. So different breeding methods followed in cauliflower were. Uh, mass selection, recurrent selection, back crossing, and hybrids. Uh, recurrent selection was used to develop the synthetic properties. So, here also to overcome the self incompatibility, we have to do the butt pollination. And one more important thing is the orange card color. Uh, orange card color in cauliflower is not a single dominant gene. Uh, this was the. Uh, can somebody mute? Uh, the orange card color was not by a single dominant gene. This was the previous question. The OR. The orange card color in cauliflower was uh, governed by the single dominant gene, and uh, the black rot resistance is polygenic dominant. And there is an important classification of varieties based on the temperature requirement. The cauliflower varieties are classified into five types extra early, early, mid early, mid late, and uh, lost, late, snowball types. Uh, so, you refer any textbook, uh, get the classification of these varieties based on the uh, temperature requirement. And there are some varieties resistant to various diseases. And Posa Meghana, this is a tropical cauliflower, it can tolerate the uh, high temperature. And saline soils, growing of, uh, sal growing of cauliflower on saline soils will cause black rot. And if you grow on acidic soils, it causes deep tide, club root, and uh, white crush. So the tropical cauliflower varieties are Posa Kathi, Akka Kanti, Akka Vimal, and Akka Spurti. They set seeds in tropics. Uh, last time, Ms. Toko, I think she asked me a question. Uh, whether the tropical cauliflower needs vernalization. No, that tropi tropical cauliflower do not require uh, vernalization for uh, flowering, but the snowball type, the late flowering snowball types require uh, vernalization for flowering. So other crucifers, the uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and uh, null ball, uh, they have anti-cancer property, the presence of uh, isothiocyanates and the indoles. And the broccoli has the sulfur fan compounds which reduce the risk of uh, cancer. So, inflorescence of broccoli is cymos, Brussels sprout, null coal, racemos. Brussels sprout, null coal, cauliflower, the inflorescence is racemos, whereas the broccoli is cymos, and cabbage it is catkin. So, among all the crucifers, broccoli is the highly cross pollinated of 95%, followed by null coal, followed by cabbage, and followed by a Brussels sprout. And there is a six male style gene for identified in uh, broccoli. Again, the CMS source is the Spanigra or Ogura of uh, uh, Rafanas. So, if you see the edible portion of the broccoli is immature in flower sense, similar to cauliflower. Uh, the Brussels sprout, the Brussels sprout, the axillary buds, the axillary buds of the Brussels sprout develop into uh, small heads. So, it is called as a mini cabbage also. Uh, the axillary buds are known as bows and buttons. And the null pole, the edible portion is knob. The swollen stem above the uh, base of the, the base of the stem it, sw it swells and it forms a knob-like structure. So this is the edible portion in case of uh, 
null cause. So in case of Brussels sprout, uh, the axillary buds turns into swollen heads or swollen uh, sprouts. So topping is an important intercultural operation in Brussels sprout. Topping means removal of the apical portion. So the removal of the apical portion allow the axillary buds to grow into bigger sprouts or big heads. So topping, removal of the top growing point or apical portion is an inter important intercultural operation in Brussels sprout. So it also useful. It, will, it also useful for the mechanical harvesting also. Uh, so the null pole is harvested when uh, it gets the six to eight centimeter diameter. And kale. When come to kale, when come to there are two types of kale. One is scotch kale with much curled leaves. There is Siberian kale with uh, less curled blue purplish leaves. Two types of kale. One is scotch type. One is Siberian type. And Chinese cabbage also two types. Kasai. Kasai, it is having elongated head like cosletis and pop chai is having no head, no heading rosette leaves. You see the botanical names are different, Kasai and the pop chai, uh, just to see the difference in the botanical names also. So there is some intergenetic hybridization was made among the cruciferous vegetables and some uh, vegetables were developed by hybridizing the different uh, genera of uh, uh, the cruciferous. Uh, they are known as the Raphanobrasca, you all know that radishian cabbage, but, uh, it was a failure. The breeder was expected to get the roots of radish and the heads of cabbage, but uh, unfortunately he got the reverse roots of uh, cabbage and the uh, top portion of radish for Raphanobrasca. And Nabicol, Nabicol was a, a cross between kale and turnip, calico between cauliflower and cabbage, rotabaga between turnip and ulicol, Hakuran between cabbage. Hakuran is the previous question. Hakuran, cabbage is Chinese cabbage, it is resistant to soft rot and it is tolerant to heat also. Hakuran was previously asked and Botabaga also previously asked. Now we move to the uh, bulb drops. There are two important bulb drops one is onion and one other one is garlic, alium sepa and alium sativa. So onion, the edible portion of the onion is a bulb, it is a modification of the stem, onion is a shallow rooted crop. So origin of the onion is Iran, it is originated in the Iran. And the pungency in the onion, you all know that pungency, the onion is very pungent. The pungency in the onion is due to the presence of allyl propyl disulfide. This is also uh, very commonly asked question. The pungency in the onion is due to the presence of Ally, propyl, disulfide, sulfur compounds. So, ileum proliferum is an intraspecific hybrid between ileum sepa and ileum fistulosum. Whenever you see a, uh, this uh, X mark between the genus and the species, ileum X proliferum, that means it is a natural hybrid. The hybridization was occurred uh, naturally. So, the species ileum proliferum was originated. By natural intraspecific hybridization between Ilium sepa and Ilium fistulosum. And there is a biflavonoid present in the onion that is quercetin that reduces the cancer. And the presence of diphenylamine in the onion uh, makes it good for the uh, diabetic patients. And the uh, amino acids, Ilium and Ilstalin, reduce the cholesterol and heart attack. So, onion is very healthy food. Onion is very healthy. Onion is very beneficial. So, these are the health benefits of the uh, onion. And there are some other uh, ilium species we can we use as uh, vegetables like uh, shallot, ilium escalonicum, and tree onion, ilium sepa variety, gibi barum. So the tree onion is resistant to all pest and diseases. The onion belongs to the family umbelliferae. The inflorescence is a umbel. The onion is a cross pollinated crop due to the presence of protandry. Protandry means the male reproductive organs mature earlier than the female reproductive organs. That means the androsium comes to mature earlier than the gynosium. Whereas in case of coal crops, crucifers, they exhibit protogyny. Whereas the umbelliferae family exhibits protogyny. So all the crucifers have protogyny, all the umbelliferae family species have protogyny. So it's a cross pollinated crop. The cross pollination was, is mediated by their honeybees. So yeah, since onion is also cross pollinated crop, there is a definitely a certain degree of uh, inbreeding depression. For the development of hybrids, we need inbreds. So we have to sell for, for six to seven generation to get a hybrid. So to overcome the hybrid, the breeding method of selfing and mossing was used in the onion. This was also previously question. Two to three times this question was asked. Selfing and mossing method uh, of onion was followed to overcome that inbreeding depression. 
are sometimes having and massing are followed in which crop onion which type of question may come so the bulk color in onion is gone by five genes i c r g l and the glossy foliage is like a single residue gene it is correlated with the resistance to thrips you can say it is like a antibiosis mechanism so presence of the glossy leaf surface the thrips uh, may not differ the uh, prefer the feeding on the glossy foliage onion types so the colored bulbs are said to be resistant to black mold disease and uh, onion was the first crop where the cytoplasmic motility was identified in 1925 in the variety italian red 13-53 so cytoplasmic male sterility was first put in onion in 1925 and there is another cytoplasmic male sterility uh, that is cmst that means it is sensitive to temperature it was identified in a french cultivar berninger uh, so it was 93 percent male sterility 14 degrees centigrade and the temperature increases to 23 degrees centigrade the male sterility reduces to 10 percent it is not in use now because of its temperature sensitivity So the white onions have high TSS and they are suitable for the de dehydration. Dehydration is drying it there, not at all preservation. Uh, also, when we talk about post harvest technology, we see dehydration. So the white color onions are generally preferred for the dehydration, and the dehydration ratio of onion is 10 is to 1. That means if you dry 10 kg of onion, you will get 1 kg of dehydrated or dried product. Uh, so when the seed production of onion temperature is very important for both bolting and the flower uh, flowering in case of bulk production day length is very important the asiatic types are short days for uh, bulk production that is 10 to 11.5 hours and whereas european types are long days for bulk production 13 to 14 hours this is also very important one. the long day onion is grown in summer season in hills because Uh, in summer season in hills so only we can get the low temperature and long days so the long days european onion requires low temperature and long days but in india only in hilly areas during summer season we get the low temperature and long days likewise potato flowering potato also for flowering requires long days and low temperature it occurs in hilly areas during summer season the long days and low temperature so the multiplier onion is elm sepa variety aggregatum it is propagated by the bulbils and uh, number of irrigations are very important in onion because the number of irrigations varies with the uh, season in case of onion if you grow the onion in kharif it requires 8 to 10 irrigations in case of late kharif it requires uh, 12 to 15 in case of rabi it requires 15 to 20 irrigations the two hybrids in onion are atta kitman and atta lalima and kharif onion doesn't store well it wants to uh, sprouting the rabi onion stores well the rabi onion can be stored for long time but the kharif and late kharif onion cannot store well so that we have to send the kharif and late kharif onion uh, to the market immediately so generally we see we, we hear in the news that the onion price falls down to kg 2 rupees this that happens because of this because kharif and late kharif onion we cannot store we have to send it to the market immediately so all the harvest of kharif and late kharif onion comes in the months of uh, Uh, October to December to the market at the same time, so there will be a collecting the price. At the same time, the rabi onion, rabi onion can be stored. It can be used up to. A rabi onion is generally harvested in the months of uh, March. Uh, so in uh, October and uh, harvesting will be done in the March. So rabi onion can be stored and it can be utilized up to uh, May. So the rabi onion can be utilized up to May, but the kharif onion comes in the November December. So between May and uh, November, there is no summer crop of onion because of that there is great demand for the onion, but there is no summer crop. So in between May to December, the price of the onion will increase. So it goes to kg 50, 60, 80, uh, and when it comes to November and December, when the uh, late kharif and kharif onion comes to the market at the same time, and it, so we cannot store it well, no. So we have to send it to market and uh, we have to sell it immediately. So the price will fall down. So this is a general. Generally, the price fluctuations in the onion uh, will affect the governments also. Lot of political debates also will happen. Uh, so this is the main reason because we do not have any summer crop, summer onion crop. Uh, this price fluctuations are happening. Uh, this may not be required for your examination, but this is general knowledge. Uh, so uh, variety suitable for curry and rabi. You can refer any textbook to see what are the varieties for curry and what are the varieties for rabi. So, Arthasoma is a yellow onion suitable for the export. 
and uh, a swadishta is a fermented onion and uh, long day onions are uh, brown spanish green spanish ugly lock here brown and the posa rudi is a new variety it is very pungent it is rich in antioxidants that is tercidin there is posa somme is a bunching onion variety that means it is alien shape of variety aggregate only so another important bulk crop is garlic it is sexually sterile diploid garlic does not produce flowers so there is no question of seed propagation in garlic garlic is propagated by the flowers it requires 500 kg per hectare very easy to remember 500 kg per hectare this is also very common question because of the unique nature so uh, seed rate uh, in seed technology we call anything seed it may be a tuber it may be a stem cutting or it may be a flow it may be a bulb in uh, seed technology terms we call it as a seed when it comes to botanically it may change but in seed technology point of view we call all of them as seeds so the seed rate means here the close only uh, the garlic seed rate is 500 kg per hectare and there is a triplet garlic alien satayam variety scardoprasum and the great headed garlic is a hexaploid type so why the flavor in the garlic is due to dialyl disulfide and dialyl bisulfide in case of onion it is uh, allyl propyl disulfide but in case of garlic it is dialyl disulfide dialyl trisulfide so similar to garlic onion is also short day plants in plains and long day plants in hills so agri fund poverty is a long day garlic and phule basant is a garlic uh, that is in purple color so another uh, species is leek uh, this is a non bulb forming uh, helium uh, leek is used for the mainly the green uh, shoots and leaves it is a long day type uh, leek is tetraploid crop leek is a tetraploid like pumpkin pumpkin is a tetraploid crop leek is tetraploid crop Uh, so the blanching is an intercultural operation what is blanching we have to cover the young shoots and leaves of the leaf with the brown paper or any other paper to prevent the exposure to sunlight so that the shoots and the leaves will remain tender and the remain that the, the flower and pungency will be retained and the shoots will remain tender so blanching is an inter important intercultural operation in case of brussels sprout the important intercultural operation is popping removal of the typical portion in case of leek the important intercultural operation is blanching we have to cover the young shoots and leaves and to prevent the direct exposure to sunlight so pp and bang is a selection from exotic gentlajam that is the variety of uh, leek so now we next move to the root crops there are four important root crops uh, dacus carota marcanus sativus Uh, turnip, rascar, rapa, varic, glabra, and beetroot, beta vulgaris. The origins, chromosome number, and the other things we just refer in the book that I have not mentioned here. So, uh, radish, radish is a very ancient root crop. It was uh, domesticated and uh, used even before Christ. I think the ancient, very ancient root crop, uh, radish. The radish also belongs to the family Cruciferae. Since radish belongs to Cruciferae, it is protogynous, cross-pollinated. And the cross pollination is mediated by the entomophily. That means by insects. There are two types of radish: the European radish and the Japanese radish. The European radish is the Japanese variety of variety radiculata, and the Asiatic or Japanese radish is the Japanese variety of variety Japanese coides. And uh, there is a red-tailed radish, another species that is the Japanese coides. It produces pods, pods like legumes or plants produce pods. The pods of red-tailed radish are edible. And there is another species, oil seed radish, that is Satayvas variety Olifer. It can be used as fodder and vegetable oil and green manure purpose. And the black radish or Spanish radish seed, the famous Satayvas variety Niga. And the important decision radish is the club root, because of the fast modifera brassica. It is the resistance is formed by the single dominant gene. And we all know that radish roots are pungent. The pungency in radish roots is due to the presence of the iso thayo cyanates and like the radish also require short days for the long root production so what is the edible portion of the radish it is a modified root swollen root that means it is a the radish swollen the swollen portion of the radish is the uh, component three component of three types of roots and this primary root secondary root and the hypocotyl all these three parts will swell and form the edible portion in radish So high temperatures above 33 degrees centigrade cause the stigma to dry and it inhibits the pollen germination. That means seed set will affect when the temperatures above 33 degrees centigrade. 
the CMS in radish is Ogura type, but it is associated with the chlorophyll deficiency. That means the cytoplasmic malleability is linked with the genes that cause chlorophyll deficiency. So, uh, European radish require vernalization for flowering because they are temperate types, they require low temperature for flowering for a particular period of time. So, what is the amount, what is the temperature requirement and how many days it has to be, we will see in the next slides. So, the European radish require vernalization, but the tropical radish do not require vernalization. The tropical radish can produce seed in the north Indian plains, but European radish require vernalization for seed set. So, John Puri radish is a local radish color cultivar. It is, John Poo is an area in Uttar Pradesh. So, uh, it is local to that area. If we can say that it is a land race or a farmer's variety. So, the radish roots can grow up to 1 meter length. And there are new varieties. Posa Himani is suitable for the hilly areas. Uh, in hilly areas, we can take three crops of the Posa Himani radish because of the low temperature provides throughout the year. In Posa Himan, the Posa Himani variety can be grown three times a year in hilly areas. So, there is another variety, Posa Jamuni, where the roots are purple color, and Posa Gulabi, where the roots are pink color. The purple pink, what is the advantage of these colored roots? Because the colored roots are present with, uh, color is due to the presence of the anthocyanins, the anthocyanins are the potential antioxidants, which are good for the human body, which has a role in the prevention of the cancer by neutralizing the free radicals in our human body. So the summer radish is Posa Chetki, you can go in the summer season. There is Arka Nishant is resistant to bolting in. Pithiness, Pithiness is a physiological desert in radish and we will see it about it later. So generally we know that radish root shape is long, but there are uh, European types where the root shape is round. There are the rapid wet white teeth, scarlet glow, French break parts. This was the previous question. Uh, which of the following is the round root shape radish variety? This was the previous question. Rapid red white tip, scarlet globe, and French breakfast. Next root crop is turnip. This also belongs to the family Brassica, I mean Crucifera. Uh, so roots and leaves are edible. Uh, here the swollen roots are hypopatite. Uh, in case of radish, the swollen roots are primary roots, secondary roots, and hypopatite. But in case of a turnip, the swollen portion is the only hypopatile. The hypopatile thickening uh, begins in the central part of the hypopatile and the, it's the swelling proceeds towards the both ends. And the exercise is the same. Turnip can tolerate the freezing temperatures. And the close related species is Brassica nervous variety, therefore uh, Brassica. So the turnip process with uh, uh, Brassica nervous and produce sterile uh, triploids. And turnip also cross pollinated crop due to the presence of uh, sporophytic uh, self incompatibility and cross pollinated was mediated by the uh, insects. So the turnip is having purple root skin color. Uh, sometimes you can see that if you see the turnip roots, you can see the purple skin color. It is done by two independent uh, dominant genes. Uh, the club root resistance is done by three, two, in sorry, two independent uh, dominant genes. There's a mistake here. So the turnip mosaic virus is an important disease. It was transmitted by the flea beetle and the resistance was done by a single dominant gene. The European varieties are Pusa Swarnima and Pusa Chindrima, with the Asiatic varieties are Pusa Kanchan, Pusa Sveti, and Punjab Sakhir 4. So carrot is another important uh, root crop. Uh, there is a appetizer drink prepared from black carrot known as kanji. So the kanji is prepared from the black carrot. This was also one of the previous questions. Here the edible cost is cap root. In case of radish, the swollen roots are primary roots, secondary roots, and hypopatite. In case of turnip, the swollen part is the hypopatite. In case of carrot, the swollen part is the cap root. So if you see the intersection of the carrot, you can see the central inner core portion, which is formed by the secondary xylem and pit, and the outer peridum will be there. In between the inner core and the outer peridum, there is a secondary phloem. The sugars are stored in that uh, secondary phloem. Uh, so, the sweet portion in the carrot is the secondary phloem just uh, next to the uh, peridum and the inner core is the tough portion that is the secondary xylem pit. So, the breeding of one of the important breeding objective in uh, carrot is we have to have less inner core portion. So, inner core portion is less means the secondary phloem portion will increase, the sugary portion will increase. If the inner core tough portion is more means 
uh, if not much preferable for uh, edible purpose. So carrot was originated in uh, Afghanistan. It was introduced to India in 13th or 14th century. Just please remember wherever these uh, introductions are given uh, in a particular century, because there were previously questions about the uh, introduction of tapioca into India in this century and the introduction of uh, French bean into India in this century. So wherever I have given this uh, introductory centuries, <laughs> sorry, wherever I have given the e centuries where when the that particular crop was uh, introduced to India, uh, please remember. There are actually three types of, uh, not only three, four types of uh, colors in the carrot, red, orange, purple, and uh, yellow. So the purple and yellow carrots were the first domesticated in Europe, and the white and orange types are the mutant of the yellow types. Here are the purple and red types of the first introduced to India, and the orange characters introduced much uh, later. So these characters, uh, this uh, alpha carotene and the root cracking, yellow xylem, western to cuspera, uh, downy mildew, these all types are drawn by the single dominant gene, and the purple root color is drawn by the two dominant genes. So sometimes we can feel the carrot root is bitter. So the bitter principle in the carrot is due to the presence of uh, iso -pomarin. And the important cytoplasmic male sterility system in carrot. There are two types of cytoplasmic male sterility system in carrot. Uh, one is the brown anther type, and the one is the petaloid type. So in case of brown anther type, what happens? The anthers degenerate. The anthers will not develop, they degenerate, uh, they, so that the male sterility will operate. So the brown anther type is found in the variety tender, sweet. And the petaloid type male sterility, there is a stem and turns into petals. So literally there are no stamens. So the male sterility will operate by turning the stamens into petals. So this petaloid type of male sterility was found in the carnal wild carrot. And there is a third uh, male sterility system in uh, carrot. This is a hybrid male sterility system. Here it is a hybrid between Dacus gummifer and Dacus carota. So there are three types of male sterility system in uh, carrot. So the carrot belongs to the family Umbelliferae. So umbel, cross pollinated crop, protandry, and the pollination was mediated by the insects. So Kusa rudira and Kusa vishti are the red color uh, carrots. Kusa asita and Punjab black beauty are the black color carrots. And Arka suras sets the seeds in the tropical South Indian plains. Here in South Indian plains also, Arka suras variety set the seeds. So the carrot hybrids were developed based on the cytoplasmic history they were Kusa uh, Mayan Jyoti, suitable for temperate region, and Kusa Vasudha, suitable for tropical regions. And Kusa Payasa is the new variety of carrot that is resistant to ordinary medium. So, beetroot, you can say uh, the fourth uh, root crop, root vegetable. So, beta vulgaris, subspecies vulgaris, it is known as garden beet, farmer beet, sugar beet, and the subspecies cicla is a leafy beet. So, cultivated beetroot was originated from the beta vulgaris subspecies Merkima. Uh, perhaps hybridization with the beta fertula. It may be directly, maybe originated from surface maritima or perhaps hybridization with the beta fertula. So, beetroot requires abundant sunshine for its uh, growth. Uh, in case of, if you see the root of beetroot, the upper portion of the swollen part is the hypophytite and the lower portion is the taproot. In case of radish, it is primary root, secondary root, and hypophytite. In case of turnip, it is only hypophytite. In case of carrot, it is only taproot. In case of beetroot, it is a combination of hypophytal and taproot. The top portion of the beetroot comes from hypophytal and the lower portion of the beetroot comes from the taproot. And beetroot is a drought tolerant root crop. The roots of the beetroot can go up to 30 cm deep into the soil. The roots of the beetroot can go up to 30 cm deep into the soil so that it facilitates the drought tolerance in beetroot. <coughs> Excuse me. So the high temperature conditions uh, in the beetroot that reduce the color of the beetroot. If you if the temperatures prevailing are very high, the color of the beetroot will affect, and you can see different uh, uh, color marks inside the uh, beetroot. If you cut the beetroot horizontally, you can see different color zones due to high temperature. That is called zoning. Uh, and the root, red root, red violet root color is due to beta cyanins, and the yellow color is due to beta jonkins. And the inflorescence of beetroot is spike. It is cross pollinated. The cross pollination was mediated by wind, anemophily. This is an important thing. Uh, cross pollination in beetroot is mediated by the wind. It is called anemophily. 
So the round beetroot varieties are required dark red and crimson blue with the flat types are uh, cross bee Egyptian and leaf on the long. Generally we see the beetroot with round shape or uh, conical shape. But uh, the long beetroot also there that is long dark black. So beetroot is susceptible to boron deficiency also. So we completed the whole crops, bulk crops and the uh, root crops. And now we move now we move to the this, uh, tropical sugar crops. The temperate sugar crop is potato that we covered in our uh, last lecture. Uh, now we see the tropical sugar crops. What are the different uh, tropical tuber crops? Uh, sweet potato, cassava, grecarium, yam, white yam, and uh, colocasia. Uh, you can you can go through the botanical names, family, chromosome number, and uh, their origin. You can get from my slides. Another Colocasia, Elephant Fukion, Tamiya, Mississippian, Chinese potato. So, sweet potato it is another important tropical sugar crop. It was originated in tropical America and it was introduced to India 16th century. Potato was introduced in 17th century, 16th century sweet potato. And sweet potato was originated from the Ipometrida. The, again, there is a lot of confusion about the origin of the sweet potato, whether it has come directly from the Ipometrida. Or it might have come from the natural hybridization between Ipometrida and some unknown species. And sweet potato is a hexaploid to unit equal to 6 of C to the 19C. The most commonly repeated question hexaploid for sweet potato and the number of number 2 is equal to 19. Uh, this is the most repeated question. So here, which is, whether it is auto hexaploid or, or allo hexaploid, again, there is a lot of debate going on, but uh, till now there is no clarity whether it is auto hexaploid or allo hexaploid. We can have potato, the cultivated solanum tuberosum is auto tetraploid. The cultivated solanum polyniferum is yellow tetraploid. But the sweet potato still has a confusion whether it is auto hexaploid or allo hexaploid. So there is another important leafy vegetable species in Ipomia, that is Ipomia aquatica. This is a water vegetable also, aquatic vegetable, where the leaves are uh, edible. So sweet potato is a hermaphrodite. The sweet potato is having hermaphrodite flowers, but it is cross pollinated. Due to the nature of the self incompatibility, sweet potato is having self incompatibility. Those sweet potatoes are having uh, thermocorrect flowers, it is cross pollinated. Here, the tubers are the swollen, adventitious roots. The tubers in the sweet potato are the swollen, adventitious roots, and the inflorescence is sign, flower color is white to purple. And the most important, the difficulty in the sweet potato breeding is the anthesis occurs in the early morning, 4 to 5 days. So, you have to do hybridization before that, before the opening of the flower. That means uh, you have to go to the field early morning 3 o'clock and you have to do pollination at the time. So that is a major difficulty in breeding uh, uh, of this sweet potato. So it is a drought tolerant crop. Almost all crops and super crops are drought tolerant. Uh, this is the tapioca, sweet potato, and yams. Uh, long days favor the root development and short days favor the uh, flowering in case of uh, sweet potato. So sweet potato is propagated by the vine cuttings. The vine cuttings of uh, 25 to 40 centimeter length. So the high soil pH in uh, sweet potato causes the pox and the scurf disease. Like there, is, there is a very important pest in the sweet potato. Like eusinodes uh, how eusinodes are the is a very important pest in the brinjal. It is a menace in brinjal. Like that in sweet potato, Silas formicarius, the sweet potato weevil is a very big menace. It is a very important pest. So far, there is no remedy for this pest. In sweet potato, the sweet potato weevil, silas, form carriers. So, there are different flush varieties in uh, sweet potato. The orange flush varieties are Sri Vatini, Ratna, Kiran, Kamala Sundari, and Kusona. And the purple flush varieties for Bhu Krishna. Krishna means the Hindu god Krishna. Uh, he generally he said that the Hindu god Krishna is uh, generally blue purple color. So, you can remember like that the Bhu Krishna is the purple variety of sweet potato. Uh, tapioca. Tapioca is also known as maniac, yucca in Malaysia and Brazil. Uh, tapioca was originated in uh, Brazil and it was introduced to India in Kerala region by Portuguese in the 17th century. Whereas sweet potato was introduced in 16th century, tapioca was introduced in uh, 17th century. The inflorescence in uh, tapioca is monoecious, that means male and female flowers present in the same inflorescence, but they are different. Male class project on the top of the inflorescence, and the female class project on the bottom of the inflorescence, and the, the tapioca exhibits phototainy. That means the female class mature earlier than the 
or milk flowers. Stigma becomes deceptive, appears in the anthracnosis. So it is a cross pollination graph, and the cross pollination is mediated by the honey bees. So where is the protagonist? In Crucifer's protagonist is the cabbage kelly flower, and in the tapi tapioca protagonist is there. And the umbelliferae protandry, carrot, onion, yes, protandry. So tapioca is having very less shelf life. Tapioca tubers we cannot store for more than 48 hours. There is a physiological result called uh, physiological deterioration. Physiological deterioration will start in tapioca tubers after 48 hours. We cannot store tapioca for long time. The uh, deteriorated tubers we can see a blue color uh, discoloration in the tapioca tubers after deterioration. So there is important uh, product made from the tapioca starch that is called Saigo Sabudana. Sabudana is a very important product made from the tapioca starch. Sometimes the tapioca tubers are bitter. The bitterness is due to the presence of the hydrogen cyanide. Hydrogen cyanide is formed from the leukocytes, lenmarin and lost pollen. So based on the better content, I mean the HCN content, uh, the tapioca varieties are classified into three types, sweet, intermediate and bitter. If the HCN content is less than 50 mg per kg, it is a sweet type, 50 to 100 mg means it is intermediate. And the, the tapioca tubers are having uh, HCN more than 100 mg per kg, they are the bitter types. <coughs> tapioca is propagated by the stem cuttings of 25 to 30 cm length. And there is a true seed in tapioca also. The true seed is the botanical seed. It is having the dormancy for three to four months. Based on the duration, tapioca varieties are two types. The long duration varieties are having 10 to 11 month crop duration. There is the short duration varieties are having six to seven months crop duration. There are two varieties M4 and M6 in tapioca were introduced from Malaysia. The examples of short duration tapioca varieties are Vijaya, Sri Vijaya, and Velani Kaswa. There is a cassava mosaic disease, very important disease in uh, tapioca. It's a very big uh, problem in cassava. Uh, it was transmitted by the white fly. First time, three years ago, first time, uh, cassava mosaic disease still varieties were released by CPCRI. They are Sri Raksha, Sri Sikti, and Sri Suvarma. So, another important uh, tuber crop is uh, taro. Uh, especially in the eastern and uh, northeastern India, taro is very commonly grown and very commonly consumed uh, tuber crop. Taro is originated in Malaya or uh, Southeast Asian region. Taro is having both diploids and triploids. Uh, and the calm, the calm of the taro is a stem modification. In case of sweet potato, there are the adventitious roots. In case of tapioca, the also there are adventitious roots. <coughs> in case of taro, the edible portion is the modification of the stem that is calm. Uh, this is very important. There are two botanical varieties of taro. One is Edo type and another one is the Shin type. Edo type is Colchicea esculenta variety Antiquorum. The, the Shin type is Colchicea esculenta variety uh, Esculenta. So the Edo type produces caramels. So there is no mother form. I produce the caramels, the daughter forms, we can say, the caramels, we say. 15 to 20 caramels are produced in the Edo type. There is no big mother form. Small caramels are produced in Edo type 15 to 20. Whereas in case of the Shin type, there is a big mother form with only few, four to yeah. five caramels will be there. So this is the difference between Edo type and the Shin type. In Edo type, there is no mother form. It produces caramels of 15 to 20. Whereas in case of uh, the Shin type, mother form will be there with a few caramels, four to five. The Edo type is generally grown in India. That is, uh, the, the Shin type is popular in Pacific and Caribbean islands. This poi, the poi is an important uh, fermented product prepared, prepared from the taro farms. There is an anti nutrient factor present in the taro. If you touch the taro, you can get itching on your fingers, and if you consume it, you can feel the pricking sensation in the throat. That is due to the presence of the anti nutrient factor calcium oxalate crystals. So, this is also another important question. The calcium oxalate crystals, the itching sensation in the taro is due to the presence of calcium oxalate crystals. And the taro is propagated by both palms and palmers 20 to 25 months. This is very important. Actually, the tuber size, the tuber size used for the planting 
in Terra and Leon, so very important. Uh, there are the previous questions. The corn and kernel of 20 to 25 gram is used for planting the taro and for yam from the phoenix. What is the tube of size? So these are well propagated by vegetatively, propagated vegetatively through corns and kernels. The size is 20 to 25 grams. And there are some important varieties, uh, Sri Rashmi, Sri Pallavi, Bidan Chaitanya, and the Bidan Jayade. And Somova hybrid is the first taro hybrid. Somova hybrid is the first taro hybrid released in the time with PZ, not in India, PZ. Whereas Alufa sunrise is another hybrid. Fiji is the country that reached the first Terra hybrid. So, yam, there are actually three types of yams uh, Greater yam or white yam, one is Diasporia alata, there is Lesser yam and Chinese yam, Diasporia esculenta, uh, white yam, Diasporia rotundata. This white yam is also having dwarf types with one meter height. Generally, yams, the, the above ground portion of the yam is a wild. So it requires staking. Staking is a very important intercultural operation in yams, greater yam and lesser yam, because the wine grows up to length of 8 to 10 meters. So staking is required in case of yam. Staking is an important intercultural operation. But there are particular white yam types. For some particular white yam types, there's for a written data, which grow up to 1 meter length of the bushy types, they do not require staking. This was the previous question. Uh, then what is the variety of the dwarf white yam? So the white yam, the Astral Rotundata is having certain types which are dwarfs that grows only one meter height, they do not require staking. There is another yam, potato yam or the aerial yam, the Astral Bulbifera, we produce bulbils in the aerial portion of the vine. In the leaf axils of the vine, it produces bulbils. And there is another yam, the Astral Kainsis, which is yellow yam. Here the chobar is the swollen hypopotale. In tarot, stem modification, the so edible portion is stem modification in tarot, the edible portion in yam is the swollen hypopotile. Uh, so, Diasporia alata, esculenta, and bulbifera originated in the Indo Malian region, whereas Rotundata and KSS were originated in the Western Africa. As I said, Diasporia bulbifera produce aerial bulbils in the leaf axils. Yam is a dioecious crop, where the male and female uh, plants are different. And the male flowers, the male inflorescence is manical, and the female inflorescence is spike. Yam is a dioecious plant. And there is an important alkali diocesan in extract from the tubers of uh, some yam species. The diocesan is used in the preparation of uh, steroidal drugs and oral contraceptive pills. So, yam is a purely tropical crop, it cannot tolerate frost and low temperature. The short days favor the tuber production. The yam tubers have dormancy up to 8 to 10 weeks. The dormancy can be broken by keeping the tubers in 4 to 8 percent ethylene chlorohydrin followed by the shade drying. But the greater yam, diasporia alata, doesn't exhibit any tuber dormancy, but the lesser yam and white yam tubers have the dormancy. So, for planting, is, uh, uh, the propagation is vegetatively, and the planting material is tuber pieces. The, for greater yam, we have to plant 20, 200 to 250 grams, for lesser yam, 100 to 125 grams. In case of uh, Palacasia, the palm size for planting is 20 to 25 gram. In case of Gatterium, the tuber size is 200 to 250 gram. The Lesserium, the tuber size is 100 to 125 gram. As I said earlier, staking is an important input as an operation because the wine grows up to 8 to 10 meters length. So there are some important Gatterium varieties, Lesserium, Vitium. Sri Nilima is a Gatterium variety that is having the purple fresh color and the purple color is due to anthocyanins. There is one dwarf variety, Sri Tanya, it grows only one meter height, it doesn't require staking. So another important crop is the elephant uh, fruit yam, it is also known as Suran and Chemican, it is also popular in East India, especially with the uh, Bengal and the uh, Bihar. So there are two types of elephant fruit yam, Amarphophorus pianifolius form a hortensis, is cultivated and edible, and the pianifolius form a silvestris in a wild with a uh, rust and the elephant fruit yam tuber sauce has to be blood purifier and the, the, like taro because taro and elephant fruit yam belong to the same family RAC. So they have the anti lutein factor calcium oxalate crystals. Uh, it causes the itching of fingers and pricking sensation in the throat. So tapioca, sorry, the elephant fruit yam is also having protogeny cross pollinated crop. Pollination is needed by the beetles. Uh, the inflorescence uh, at the time of maturity, that means when the stigma become more receptive, it produces a um, foul smell, and the in insects are attracted to the foul smell and they facilitate the pollination. 
pollination by insects. Now, insects means uh, in generally uh, honeybees uh, in other crops, but here it is beetle, not the honeybee. Uh, insect is, here it is beetle, the pollination is related to the beetles. Uh, and tapioca is having propagating, elephant food is also having propagating, and the cabbage, cauliflower are having the propagating. So, elephant food germ is also propagated through palms and farmers, and the tuber piece required for planting is 500 grams. Here, the size of the palms are planting is 500 grams, and it is a long duration crop, it takes 7 to 8 months to harvest. And the dormancy of the tuber piece can be broken by treating with the thioria 0.1%, GA3, and the ethyl. Uh, though there are different varieties of uh, elephant food germ, the genera is the most popular variety of elephant food germ, and it is being grown in a larger area. So, the genera is a variety of the infant food yam, that is an important uh, question. And the Sri Athira, a hybrid was developed in infant food yam, that is Sri Athira, but it was not that much popular when compared to the genera. So, there are some minor sugar crops like uh, Chinese potato or polyas, so this common, and the polyas, uh, propagated for vine cuttings. And there are two important varieties of Chinese potato, Sri Thara by CTCRI and Sofala. Sofala is a limited variety of Chinese potato, which is the Kerala Agriculture University. Sri Dara also very repeatedly asked the question. Chinese potato polyas. And Tanya, Janto Sama, Sagi Tikolias. Yombin, it is very popular in Behar and West Bengal. The Yombin tubers are generally used for the salad purpose, very sweet. You can eat them raw. Uh, the important thing is Yombin is a leguminous tuber crop. It belongs to the family Fabesi. It is a leguminous tuber crop, Tycorrhizus erosus. And all tuber crops are propagated vegetatively through tuber pieces or palm pieces, but uh, so yam bean is propagated through seeds because it belongs to the family seed family. And the seeds of the yam bean contain some common substance called uh, retinol. Uh, it is harmful to the cattle. The cattle even if of humans also, if we eat them, it is harmful. It is a common substance. There is one important variety in uh, yam bean that is Rajabram Srikundal from Bihar Agriculture University. And Queensland arrowroot, known as Kema Indica, and the arrowroot biscuits are very popular in India because the starch of the arrowroot, uh, as the starch of the arrowroot is very simple, it, the starch of the arrowroot can be digested very easily in the human stomach. So the starch of the arrowroot is used for uh, preparation of the baby foods, like uh, Sirlac and uh, some other baby foods. No? For preparation of the baby foods, they use arrowroot starch because it is very simple starch and uh, can be easily digested. So the rest in the narrow route is Maranta or Indonesia. So now we move to the leafy vegetables. There are different leafy vegetables, the botanical name, family, promotion number and uh, origin. And not uh, salad vegetables. What is the difference between leafy vegetables and salad vegetables? Leafy vegetables where you have to cook the leaf and eat the salad vegetables, you can eat them raw, no need of cooking. So I have given a brief uh, um, Table, uh, table about the uh, important points of these leafy vegetables. Uh, what is the temperature requirement for the vegetable season or the warm season crop? What is the ideal portion? What is the dispersal state? What is the transformation that is self pollinated? Uh, what is the propagation rate and uh, seed rate? Because they are the very minor vegetables, no? they ask mostly these type of questions. They may not ask much detail for the major crops. So, this is the, these are the very important points in these crops. Uh, there was a question last time. Mm, yeah, leafy vegetables. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this was the question uh, last time. Warm season self pollinated leafy vegetable. Which of the following is the warm season self pollinated leafy vegetable? That is, New Zealand's This was the question last time. Because if you see all the leafy vegetables, they are pretty similar. Cool season, cool season, cool season, cool season, cross pollinated, cool season, cross pollinated, support will cross pollinated, support, cool season, cross pollinated, uh, warm season, cross pollinated, warm season, cross pollinated, cool season, self pollinated. So, this was the question last time asked. The warm season, self pollinated. This is the only crop to be this combination. Warm season, self pollinated crop, this is New Zealand spinach. So the important leafy vegetable is amaranthus, uh, belongs to the genus amaranthus. The, J, yeah, the genus amaranthus is having two sections. Again, section amaranthus is having various species, where the section pitoxus is having many species. Uh, there are different species in amaranthus. Uh, amaranthus uh, 
Recaller, the body choli, in Hindi it is called body choli, it means it must be, and the other of the victim is choti choli, and the other of the beast, which are the leaf types, and the grain types are Amaranthus hypochondriacus, Amaranthus caracus, and Amaranthus grantus. Uh, when we talked about potato last time, we said the one thing about this Amaranthus hypochondriacus. The Amaranthus albumin from a grain protein gene from this Amaranthus hypochondriacus was transferred to a recombinant DNA technology to potato to increase the protein printing in the potato tumors. Some greedy types also there, there are Amaranthus lindis and Amaranthus jubis. And Amaranthus is rich in uh, vitamin A. Amaranthus is a C4 plant. 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 Cross pollination through anemophilia. That means in the in case of B2, the pollination mechanism is anemophilia. That means it is done by wind. And Amaranthus also, the pollination is done through anemophilia. So in the uh, chloroplast of uh, Amaranthus hybridus, the triaging resistant genes are found. Triaging is a herbicide. The herbicide resistant genes are found in the chloroplast of Amaranthus hybridus. Amaranthus hybridus. Uh, these genes are useful for developing the herbicide resistance in the crop plants. And the black seed, seed color is two, there are two types of uh, seeds are there. One is black color seeds and one is white color seeds. And the white color seeds are not for carbon seed. Where the black seed color is high, warming tree, the darkness can be broken by moist chilling treatment, that is for scarification. Scarification means uh, rubbing the seeds against some hard substance, I mean, uh, removal of the hard seed coat by rubbing the seeds against sandpaper or something, that is scarification. And here it is stratification, that means breaking the darkness seed by giving the moist chilling treatment, this is stratification. So the duration is one month. At temperature of 2 to 4 degrees centigrade. And Rosa Kiran is a selection from the class between Amaranthus uh, tricolor and Amaranthus uh, tree, which is Rosa Paracholi, Rosa Paracholi are the varieties. Arta Ormima is a variety of Amaranthus that produces purple color leaves. Arta Ormima produces purple color leaves and white crystal in important species. So, spinach is another important uh, leafy vegetable. There are uh, four types of uh, sex forms in spinach. Extreme males, vegetative males, females, and the uh, And spinach is also cross pollinated crop, and the cross pollination is mediated by wind, emotionally. And there are two types based on the leaf type. Savoy type, where the leaves are having curls and wrinkles, and the low night temperature is responsible for savoy. Whereas the smooth type, they do not have curls, smooth leaves. Based on the seed characters, again, spinach is two types, prickly seed. It, it is produced in the hills as a round seed, it is produced in the plains. And Virginia Savoy, it is a Savoy type uh, spinach variety. It is grown in winter because water temperature is required for the Savoy of uh, leaves. And the early smooth leaf is a summer variety. Uh, spinach is a short day full season crop in the high temperature for bolting, in, uh, high temperature and long days for bolting in spinach. So, another important crop is pollen. And it can tolerate up to soil pH at 10.5. And the Jogna green is a potent variety of uh, pollard, it can tolerate soil salinity. Whereas Pusa Bharati is a variety of pollard, which in vitamin C is better protein. Uh, pollard thrive well on uh, subtropical and tropical conditions, it cannot tolerate frost, it is a long dead plant. And the seed of a pollard contains two to three seeds, so it's called seed ball or uh, teacher seed. So fenugreek, I think last time, last year we had a question about fenugreek. So it is known as 21st century wonder food. There are two species in fenugreek. One is the trigonella poison dicum, the common methi, and trigonella corniculata, the kasuri methi. There is a botanical difference between this common methi and the kasuri methi. The common methi is having the upright stem. Whereas this carniculata uh, is having a roget stem. So, and the fenugreek it tolerates a fairly low temperature. And the fenugreek is also self pollinated vegetable. Fenugreek belongs to the family Leguminaceae and Fabaceae. Like pea is having vegetable, and the fenugreek is also having vegetable, that means flower never opens before uh, flowering. And the seeds of the fenugreek also contain not like diastole, it is used in the preparation of the steroidal hormones. 
and primary is a two stage crop and uh, the shield of powder will be formed by single dominant gene and Kosa early punching is a variety of the primary group. So Basella also known as Malbar nightshade, commonly known as Koi, again uh, based on the color two types, Basella alba green color, Basella rupa red color and the Basella is a warm humid crop since it is frost and the long day have a leaf production and the short days have a seed production in Basella. And some minor leafy vegetable like the Batuva, Kinopadi, Malbum, and the Posa Batuva is an important variety. So, I will do next this curious belong to the family Polygonesi, and this is Chad Beta Valkar is very basically belong to the family Kinopadi. It will wash up the system of the species, place on the machine. So, lettuce, lettuce is another important uh, salad crop. It is, was introduced to India in uh, uh, 16th century and head type of lettuce is Lectrica sativa variety capitata and the punching type of lettuce is Lectrica sativa variety crispa and the Romanian type is Vangifolia and the Asperger type is Asperagina. And the uh, lettuce seeds have dormancy and the uh, exposure to her temperature, high temperature 25.2 to 26, 29. That means 30 degrees centigrade cross dormancy in the lettuce seeds. Uh, low temperature will uh, break the dormancy. 4 to 6 degrees, uh, sorry, it is not 60, it is 6 degrees centigrade per 30 degree. 4 to 6 degrees centigrade per 3 to 5 days, it breaks the dormancy. Celery, another important uh, uh, salad crop. Uh, leaf types are uh, variety sectarianum and the branch types are variety dulci. And the leaves contain the glucoside epin. Exposure to high temperature cause bitterness in celery. Like uh, leek, here in celery also blanching is an important operation. We have to cover the uh, leaves and uh, shoots uh, to prevent the direct exposure to sun. And baby corn, another important. Here, uh, okay, uh, GMS variety rugosa uh, is belongs to the family OAC. And is a bomb stage of C4 crop, Amaranth is a C4 crop, baby corn is a C4 crop. And the edible portion of the baby corn is an tender, unfertilized crop. You can see the difference between sweet corn and baby corn. Sweet corn, the edible portion is a fertilized, immature seeds. In case of uh, baby corn, the unfertilized crop, that means before the fertilization, if you consume the whole use directly, that is baby corn. And the important intercultural operation in baby corn is the tassel. If you see the corn plant, that male inflorescence is known as tassel, it comes in the typical portion, and the female inflorescence is known as top, it comes in the leaf axis. So, here the baby bird, the edible portion is a tender, unfertilized crop, so we have to prevent pollination in baby corn. To prevent pollination in baby corn, we have to remove the male inflorescence as soon as they emerge. So, the detasseling is very important intercultural operation in baby corn. And there is a white bud disorder in the baby corn caused due to zinc deficiency. And there are some important perennial vegetables like asparagus, curry leaf, drum stick, rhubarb, and chipper You can go through this table for the details. And here also I have given based on their temperature requirement and the propagation method was the edible portion. So asparagus, there is an alkyl uh, chemical asparagine, it is diuretic, used in the cardiac boxy and chronic gut. Blanching also done in asparagus. Blanching is done in leaf, celery, and asparagus. These three crops, blanching is done. Leaf, celery, and asparagus. So drumstick, it is a highly cross pollinated crop due to heteromorphism. And the curry leaf, there are two important varieties in the curry leaf. Uh, Swarsini or DW1. It is an important curry leaf suitable for dehydration. And the DW2 can grow during winter. So the low temperature tolerant variety of curry leaf is DW2. And the Jerusalem artichoke is having a chemical, it is a source of levelulose, a sweetening agent used for the diabetic patients. And the fleshy receptacle of globe artichoke known as heart, used for the cannabis. So uh, there are different uh, temperature effects. At what temperature, what happens, which is very important. You please go through this. The European, uh, it must be the tropical cabbage, not prepare normalization, but the European type prepare normalization to 10 degrees centigrade for the six to eight weeks. And based on the temperature requirement, cauliflower varieties are classified into extra early, early, mid early, late, late, late. You can see the temperatures here. And the late types require vernalization. The snowball types require vernalization. Uh, Whereas the tropical varieties can form third at 30 degrees centigrade. 
also. Now there are different temperature requirements for the sense for the pulley and the moon pool. Uh, here the color development in carrot and beet would be important. The temperature requirements for color development in carrot 16.5 to 21 degrees centigrade, which is B2 to 18 to 21 degrees centigrade, and the thermalization temperature is also important. 5 to 8 degrees centigrade for the temperate types, 40 to 60 days. For Asiatic types, also 15 to 25 degrees centigrade, low temperature required in carrot. Uh, radish bolting is also 20 degrees centigrade. So, onion, onion also bolting the flowering requires low temperature, 10 to 12 degrees centigrade. So, that's why the rubby onion only produces flowers. Then we have a field production with the onion in the B season in the place. So the curing temperature in onion, we will see what is curing in the next slide. The uh, other uh, crops. Lettuce is having dormancy. Lettuce is having temperature induced dormancy. Dry temperature it induced dormancy. At low temperature, there is the dormancy in lettuce. So, uh, and harvesting, what are the harvesting indices and uh, uh, the important harvesting indices are for onion. So the, when the next fall stage, when the leaves start turning yellow and becomes dry and falling of the leaves, that is an important uh, harvesting indices for rabi onion. Next fall is the harvesting indices of rabi onion. In case of Habib onion, there is no next fall. Habib onion only falls in neck. Habib onion, next fall is not there. And in case of green onion, when the plant, we can cut the shoots of the green onion when they are ready. So carrot, the size of the root is 2 to 4 cm, and beetroot 3 to 5 cm, turnip 5 to 7 to 5 cm, sweet potato, cassava. Uh, here it is important, elephant putium. Again, in elephant putium also, net fall is there. The above ground uh, pseudo stem uh, falls down in elephant putium at the time of uh, maturity. And you can observe if the soil is dry, we can observe cracks on the soil near the plant base. So, cracks on the soil near the plant base is an harvesting indices of filtry putium. This was a previous question. So, likewise, for other crops also, you can see. So, there are physiological disorders. Uh, when uh, certain uh, external weather conditions are changing, the plants also change their behavior. So when the behavior of the plant is not in the favor of humans or in favor of the plant, that we call them the disorder. So there are different theological disorders in potato, black rot, hello, greening is due to exposure to sunlight and freezing due to low temperature storage. And the black rot is due to suboxidation condition, that means reduced oxygen condition in the storage. In tomato, very important question, blossom and rot is due to calcium deficiency, fruit dragging is due to boron deficiency, uh, puffiness, improper pollination, fertilization, cat face, blotchy lighting, production deficiency. So you can read about the geological disorders and their cause. I will cover you next slides and you can get it from any book also. So P, the marshy spot of P is due to manganese deficiency and in which being the transfer spot into the tracking is due to the soil moisture condition. And cauliflower, we have a lot of disorders in cauliflower, buttoning, riciness, fudginess, and the cabbage, uh, radish. Uh, the pithiness in radish is due to excess NPK and apportion due to boron deficiency. Uh, carrot, carrot is what is due to calcium deficiency. Carrot is what calcium deficiency, that you can use it to do with that. And beet root the boron deficiency, hot pot, turmeric, onion. So you can uh, read these table, stable. So actually, pre-harvest sprays, no? for inclusion, the, especially the onion and the potato, where there is a problem of the sprouting in the storage, you can hear the sprouting in the storage by spraying these chemicals. In case of onion, if you spray malic hydrogate, 2,500 ppm, 15 days before harvest, and malic hydrogate, 300 ppm, 3 weeks before harvest with garlic. And in case of potato, 15 days before harvest, uh, this can inhibit the sprouting in uh, storage, uh, but this malt hydrogen is a banned chemical nowadays. So, but um, I don't know what are the updates regarding this area. Uh, but malic hydrogen is a banned chemical. And testing of lime uh, at the cut surface of the leaf blade during harvesting effectively reduces the black mold in onion. So, curing, curing is an important post harvest operation in case of onion and uh, tuber crops. 
because they are the under because they have the edible portion in the below the ground so during the harvesting time uh, the tubers and the bulbs uh, tend to get damaged so when they get damaged automatically the secondary infection will be there and the deterioration will occur so prevent the uh, secondary infection and to prevent the injury to cure the injuries that happen uh, during the harvesting uh, we do the curing Generally, curing is the curing. What happens to curing is uh, sulfurization will occur. That means above the injury, on the protective layer, will form. Uh, that is called sulfurization. It is a uh, outer parenchymatous tissue. So, what are the conditions required for the curing? High temperature and high humidity are uh, required for uh, curing because high temperature and high humidity promotes the uh, wound healing. Uh, the wound healing is promoted by the high temperature and high humidity. So high temperature and high humidity are required for the curing. So there are the different points, uh, what are the benefit of this uh, curing that you can read here. So these are the different temperature and humidity. Every time there is a one question in the next time we ask about the curing, curing temperature and uh, curing humidity. So you can see the temperature and humidity requirement for the, uh, each crop. Potato, sweet potato, yam, cassava, onion, and uh, garlic. Uh, you can remember the temperatures and the humidity. So, irradiation. Irradiation is also known as cold sterilization because uh, it doesn't involve uh, heating. So, irradiation can be done to inhibit the sprouting in potato and onion and uh, to prevent the elongation of uh, curvature in asparagus and to inhibit the growth of microorganisms. Vaccine. Vaccine is another important uh, post harvest operation to prevent the transpiration. The fruits and vegetables are uh, tend to lose the moisture after the uh, harvesting. So if they lose moisture, they become uh, wither. They lose their appearance so that they lose their market value. So to prevent the loss of uh, moisture to transpiration, vaccine is generally followed. There are different types of vaccines, Kuluba wax, honeybee wax, shellac, and food wax. Uh, the W wax does not import the glossiness, but the O wax imports the glossiness. Uh, you can read here the benefits of the vaccine. You can read from here on the slides. I can give you the slides. So, what for different crops, what is the vaccine treatment and what is the effect, how many days it increases the shelf life in these things? May not be required for a year of living, but uh, if anybody is there who is doing MSC and PhD, for them it will be useful. And spraying of growth regulator for improving the longevity or uh, storage longevity. So, a BA, conjoint adenine hormone, 5 to 15 ppm, prevent the sense sense and elbowing in leafy vegetables so that it uh, increases the shelf life of leafy vegetables. Nickels of potato, 1% CAPC, uh, inhibit the sprouting in storage. And uh, dipping of tomato fruits at the first stage in GA and PPM result in slow life ripening and uh, increasing the shelf life. There are some packaging chemicals, ethylene absorbents. We know that ethylene is the ripening hormone. So, by reducing the ethylene content, we can delay the uh, ripening process and we can extend the shelf life. So, while packing these fruits and vegetables, if we add some ethylene absorbents like uh, potassium permanganate, KMN, or bromate, active carbon. Like with KMN or KMN or vermic light, they absorb the ethylene in the packaging boxes and they delay the ripening and they extend the shelf life. Like in packaging, desiccant. Desiccant means uh, if, if there is more moisture in the packing boxes, it causes, like, it attracts microbial, microbial and decay. So, to reduce the moisture content in the packaging boxes, we can use desiccants like a calcium oxide and fume silica because these two they absorb the moisture in the packages. Like anti transparents, spraying of anti transparents. Anti transparents, they reduce the rate of transpiration and they prevent the loss of moisture, the phenolin and salicylic acid. And you all know the zero energy pool chamber. You might have studied about zero energy pool chamber, how it is constructed and what are the things. It maintains a temperature of 8 to 10 degrees centigrade and 90 to 90 degrees centigrade. It is a very important question. Now the temperature and relative humidity in a zero energy pool chamber are 80 to 10. 10 degree centigrade and 90 to 90 percent relative humidity will be important. So, control or modified atmosphere exposure. Generally, in storage uh, houses, uh, by modifying the atmosphere uh, uh, gases concentration, we can increase the shelf life. What happens? Oxygen promotes the uh, respiration rate. 
So when the scratch will be high, the deterioration will be earlier in the height. So to reduce the deterioration, we have to slow down the rate of respiration. So how do we reduce the rate of respiration? By reducing the oxygen concentration and by increasing the CO2 concentration, <coughs> excuse me, we can reduce the rate of respiration and extend the shelf life. Hyperbaric storage is completely vacuum. In modified atmospheric storage, we are changing the concentration of gas as oxygen and CO2. In case of hyperbaric storage, we remove the entire air from the storage space and we create a air tight vacuum that is called hybrid, sorry, hypobaric storage, hypobaric low pressure, low pressure, hypobaric means low pressure, low pressure means removal of the, the air, creation of a vacuum. So there are different methods of preservation, pasteurization, sterilization. Pasteurization means heating below 100 degrees centigrade. Pasteurization does not kill all the microorganisms. As a leaf, we, have, we do the pasteurization of leaf. <coughs> Excuse me. Sterilization uh, is done at higher temperatures, above 100 degrees centigrade. It kills all microorganisms. There are different types of storages and their temperature. Type 1 natural preservatives, type 2 chemical preservatives. This is the most common question from several types. The type 1 natural preservatives are sugar brine solution. Brine solution means glucose and salt, NaCl, spices and condiments, or organic acids like vinegar, citric and lactic acid. Vinegar is the 2% acetic acid. They are the type 1 or natural preservatives. Type 2 or chemical preservatives are sulfur dioxide and benzoic acid. You can expect this question every time. What are the which are the following is type one preservative and which are the following is type two preservative? So for different products, what is the concentration of asphalt and benzoic acid I have given here? As a general rule, preservatives are not used for the onion, garlic, leaf, chili, sentence so because already they have certain uh, chemical compounds in them that prevent the microbial uh, uh, deterioration. So generally, we do not use. Uh, Preservatives of these crops, onion, garlic, leaf, cheese, and herbs. Sometimes, if we use of these chemicals, they change the flavor and other properties of uh, the crops also. That's what, as of that reason, also we do not use these chemicals. Using of this uh, sulfur dioxide and benzoic acid may change the properties of uh, this onion, garlic, leaf uh, related to uh, in respect of the flavor and the taste. So, that's why also we do not use uh, these uh, sulfur and benzoic acid for these crops. So the antibacterial action of benzoic acid increases in the presence of CO2 and the sulfur dioxide generally is available in the KMS. Uh, sulfur dioxide KMS we do not use for the colored products like uh, tomato sauce and ketchup. We do not use KMS as a preservative because it bleaches the color of the, the sauce or ketchup. So we do not use for colored products, we do not use KMS. And drying or dehydration is another type of preservation because by removing the moisture content, we can store the produce for a longer time. Because presence of the high moisture content affects the microbial deterioration. So by, by removing the moisture from the food products, we can increase their uh, shelf life. So vegetables are generally dried at a temperature of uh, 60 to 66 degrees centigrade, and they are dried to a moisture content of 60 to 80 percent. Generally, they have high moisture content of 80 to 90 percent. We have to reduce the moisture content to 68 percent. We do not reduce the moisture content below this level because if you remove the moisture completely, uh, it changes the, it deserts the product and the fresh appearance and will lose. Uh, so, the uh, after moisture content of 6 to 8 percent will maintain in case of vegetables and the drying temperature is 60 to 66 degrees centigrade. But fruits, it is different. If you prefer for fruits, what is the drying temperature and what is the moisture content of the fruits for storage? Uh, that I forgot, but it is different for fruits, I think, that is compressed and moisture, and it means you go to it and see. <coughs> canning. Canning is an important uh, preservation method where the fruits are hermetically sealed in containers, sterilizing them by heat. You, are, you may be knowing the procedure of the canning. And blanching, this blanching is different. Blanching is special heat treatment to inactivate enzymes like catalyzer and oxidase. By boiling the products uh, at uh, uh, high temperature, for less time by boiling the products at high temperature in less time, we inactivate certain enzymes like catalase and peroxidase. This is a one of the preservation. This blanching is different from the field blanching. In field, you can have asparagus, celery, and leek. We do blanching to 
preserve their flavor and uh, tenderness to prevent them uh, the exposure to sunlight. That is, the planting is different, and here in post harvest technology, this planting is different. Don't get confused. So, just we see some important aspects of seed production. So, isolation distance is very important in seed production of vegetables because to prevent the contamination uh, of the varieties. So, generally, the genetic purity is very much important uh, in producing the seed. So, the, all the plants in a variety should be same and uniform, should have same genetic constitution. So, while producing the seed, we should prevent unwanted contamination from uh, other varieties or other compatible crop species so that we have to maintain at an isolation distance while seed production. This isolation distance is depending upon the mode of pollination. In case of peanut uh, pods and the beetroot, uh, the pollination is done by wind. So the wind can travel long distance. So we have to maintain long isolation distance. So the highest isolation distance in peanut pods is 1600 meters of foundation seed, 1000 meters of certified seed, you see for 1600 and 1000, uh, you can see here, uh, you can see pedigree. Pedigree is a self pollinating crop, so there is a less uh, isolation distance, 50 to 25. Potato is vegetatively propagated crop, so there, there, no there is no chance of contamination for pollen, but there is a chance of contamination of variety for mechanical mixtures. So, to avoid that mechanical mixtures, so we have to maintain the new isolation distance of 5 meters in potato. <clears throat> Here also you can see chili, water, ginger are the often cross pollinated crops, so the moderate isolation distance we have to follow. Tomato is self pollinated crop. So the isolation distance is less. P is the high self pollinated crop, which we, we discussed in the last class. So the isolation distance is very less, 20 meters, 20 meters. So there is a, for hybrid seed production, we have to plant the male and female plants in certain ratio. So these are the ratios for the male hybrid seed production in case of crops. So you can go through it. Seed purity. So if we take a variety of seeds, the variety of seeds should have highest purity. So the seed purity is 95% for amaranthus and carrot, 96 for wheat and pala, 99 for baby corn, wafer and butter bits, 98 for American. Why the seed purity is very high for baby corn, wafer and butter bits? Because of the thicker stage of the seed. The baby corn seed, wafer seed and butter bits seed uh, is uh, bigger in size. So we can easily identify the off types, other crop seeds, uh, any enough matter is there. We can easily identify because of the big size of the seed. So we have to make an high genetic purity of 99% in these crops. But in case of amaranthus and carrot, the seeds are very small. Amaranthus and carrot seeds are very small. It is very difficult to identify the off types, weed seeds, uh, the other crop seeds, or the inert matter like the stones and pellets. So the genetic purity is less in case of amaranthus and carrot. The genetic purity is very high in case of baby corn, water, and water, big space, and the seed size. If they ask enough to matter, you just uh, you reverse it. If 99% baby corn is there, the genetic purity of baby corn is allowed 99%, so the enough matter is 1%. So the enough matter allowed allowable enough matter percent of amaranthus is 5%. Just you 100 minus the genetic purity, you will get the percentage of the enough matter. <coughs> so how we how we uh, reduce the moisture content in uh, fruits and vegetables before storage, the seeds also, we have to reduce the moisture content before storage. So the optimum moisture content for various crop seeds, for ordinary container and wrap of fruit container are given here, we can go through this table. So in seed production, there is one important uh, important operation is rolling. That means we have to uh, digit the seed production fields and we have to remove the off types, weed types, diseased plants frequently to ensure good quality uh, seed production. So the number of rollings are very uh, for different crops. They are uh, for being some around product. It depends upon the uh, method of seed production and the duration of the seed production also. So optimum seed germination percentage. So when uh, producing the seed, the produced seed should have a minimum germination percentage according to the uh, seed production guidelines. We have a different uh, germination percentage of various seeds. The tag color very important. The Pereda seed is having the golden yellow tag color and the foundation seed is having white tag color and the certified seed is having the azure blue tag color. I have given the sowing and planting type seed rate and seed yield of various crops. This seed rate you can take for the normal commercial production of the fruit and vegetable production also. The seed rate almost same for the seed crop and for a commercial vegetable crop. The seed rate and the sowing season is same. But this is a seed yield, not the 
fruit, not the vegetable fruit yield. This is a seed yield. So the seed yield is different, but seed rate is almost the same for the seed production and the vegetable commercial vegetable production. Uh, you can go through this uh, table. Uh, the important ones are water and pea. In pea, the every requires high seed rate, 100 to 120 kg per hectare. Meat and late crop requires 80 to 90 kg per hectare. Uh, in case of wokra, yeah, here in wokra, wokra, karish crop requires 8 to 10 kg per hectare, whereas summer crop requires 10 to 15 kg per hectare. Because there is a seed germination problem in wokra during summer season, so we go with higher seed rate in wokra. So this is very important. And in case of onion also, the rabi onion requires 8 to 10 kg. If you go to the nursery and transplant the onion, it requires less seed rate, 8 to 10 kg per hectare. But if you directly sow the onion seeds, it requires high seed rate, 22.5 kg per hectare. If you plant the bulbs, it requires 15 kg per hectare. So, where there is a difference in the seed rate, no? just to go through the And the age of transplanting, 3 to 4 weeks nursery for the ginger, tomato, chili, curry, for the poly, 5 to 6 weeks nursery for the leek, lettuce, parsley, and 6 to 8 weeks nursery for the bristle sprout, onion, and celery. So it depends. Here the seed production is slightly different in cabbage. Uh, in cabbage, root crop and onion seed to seed method. That means we sow the seed and we harvest the seed. That is followed for the certified seed production. But in case of foundation seed production, there is an intermediate step. In case of cabbage, uh, we sow the seed, we absorb the heads that root to type, and we discard the heads that are not root to type to the variety, and we select the heads that are root to type to the We for the foundation seed. The head to seed method is again three types stump method, stump central core, and the head uh, intact method uh, that you can uh, refer in a textbook. In case of root crops and onion crops, also that seed to seed method is satisfied. Uh, root to seed for foundation seed. That means in first crop, we sow the seed, we harvest the roots. And uh, we check the roots for uh, their uh, true, to, true, true to type, uh, and we check the genetic uniformity, and we select the uh, roots with the bigger size and optimum size, and we prepare the roots. Uh, we cut the lower uh, top one by third portion, and the lower two by third portion we will cut, and the central portion we use for planting that to allow and that we allow the crop to produce seed. These are called stacklings. That uh, root to seed method, we see the stacklings. This is very important. We cut the lower two by third portion and the one by third top portion, and we leave the small root portion along with the small green color shoot, and that is called stackling. These stacklings are planted for root to seed method of uh, seed production. The same with the bulbs. So bulbs, we examine the bulbs. Uh, we see the based on the root to type nature of the bulbs, we will select the bulbs, and those bulbs we plant again. To produce the seed. So there is a difference in these three crops. Seed extraction in tomato and generally seed extraction is very easy in other crops, but in tomato seed extraction is three types: fermentation and alkali treatment and acidic treatment. Fermentation is long duration but safe. Long duration but safe fermentation, 24 to 72 hours fermentation. Alkali treatment with washing soda, 300 grams per 4 liter. Uh, overnight we have to keep, we have to keep. And next day we can extract the seed. But acid treatment is quick with hydrochloric acid, 75 ml per 12 kg seed. Within half an hour you can extract the seed, but seed germination is affected due to the acidic nature of the hydrochloric acid. And seed multiplication ratio. What is seed multiplication ratio? If if you sow one seed, how many seeds you can harvest? That is the seed multiplication ratio. If you seed, if you sow one seed of tomato, from that one seed, one tomato plant will come. From that one tomato plant, how many seeds you can harvest? That is the seed multiplication ratio. So this is the seed multiplication ratio of various crops, and you can go through it. So important diseases and vectors. So generally, mosaic diseases are transmitted by white flies. Sorry, yeah, uh, aphids and white flies. Second question. Uh, tomato spotted with virus transmitted by thrips, little leaf of ginger by leaf papa. And you can go through this table, you can read what are the different diseases and what are the vectors of those diseases. Uh, carrot yellow is transmitted by six spotted leaf copper, that leaf of cucumber transmitted by striped cucumber beetle, 
and the blood necrosis of watermelon transmitted by thrips, somatos watermelon virus by thrips, ethnic mosaic virus by flea beetle and coupled off field of potato by asterly sofa. You can go through this table, this is also important. Some are seed point diseases. I don't know how much uh, the tomato and lettuce mosaic virus transfer the seed, but uh, in some books it has given there is some chances of uh, transfer of the viral diseases to seed. But black heart and the form of this blight of seed 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 transfer bond diseases, black heart and black leg of diseases, and form of this blight of danger. The seed treatment of uh, seed treatment with hot water uh, at 50 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes, uh, we have to do uh, to prevent this uh, seed bond diseases. And serious diseases will seed production, Papulaja of onion, Formosis blight of brinjal, and uh, Slosher of cabbage and cauliflower, carrot, ligus bug, this is insect, carrot, ligus bug, insect, these are serious problems during seed production of the crops. And here, if you see any objective book like instant horticulture and anything, in the first they have given classification of vegetables based on various characters, that is very important, you have to buy part all the, all the classification things. Because a lot of questions will come from the classification only. Monocots and dicots. The crops belong to the families uh, RAC, LEAC, LILIAC, Diasporaceae, or monocots. And the crops belong to other families are dicots. They may ask which one of the following is a monocot vegetable like that. Tender. All warm season vegetables are tender, and all, all cool season vegetables are hearty. And based on the rate of respiration, uh, onion and potato they have less respiration rate and the leafy vegetables and the broccoli they have high respiration rate. The question will be also like this, uh, high shelf life, because of the low respiration rate, onion and potato have high shelf life, because of the high respiration rate, leafy vegetables and broccoli they have less shelf life. And protandry, protogyny, protandry, umbilical family, onion and carrot, uh, they have protandry, protogyny, coal crops, and uh, elephant food and tapioca, chipermanis have protogyny, Hydrostabin, Pinchel, Lipodamine, Lenobine, Listodamine, P and Pinchbine, Chasmodamine, Tomato and Capsicum. Part of the different genetic mutuality, cytoplasmic mutuality, ingredient depression, high, medium, low, high ingredient depression, carrot, medium in onion and uh, whole crops, low in cucurbits. And uh, emphasis, time of the flower opening, uh, bottle guard, ridge guard, snake guard, flower opening in the evening. And climatic and non climatic, tomato, muskmelon, watermelon, climatic, others are non climatic. So, in uh, any objective book, in the beginning, there is a classification like this. So, you go through the classification that is very important. So, good number of questions will come from this uh, classification. So, with this one, I finish my lecture and I wish you good luck for your examination and uh, do your best. And I also thank the organizers, the dean of the college, and the model officer, Dr. Baja. Uh, for giving me this opportunity to interact with you guys. Uh, it's a very, it's, it's a pleasure for me also because of your class. Uh, I have gone through all these things again. Uh, six years ago, I joined as a scientist and I am doing my research work only. <laughs> I almost forgot but, uh, because of you guys. Uh, thanks to you also. Because of you guys, I refreshed this subject again and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. So thank you so much for your lecture, sir. So students, uh, do you have any doubt regarding today's class? You can ask now or later, no problem. You can take my email ID or my WhatsApp, whatever it is. You can message me anytime. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, we have uh, we have uh, circulated your uh, email ID and your phone number in the group. Yeah, so thank you. Students, yeah, so if students, students uh, want to contact you personally, so they can contact you directly. Sure, sure. They can contact anytime. No problem. Okay, so, so I'll request you to send me some uh, the presentations of previous classes. Sure, I will make so I'll, Yeah, so I'll distribute it to the students. I, I think I don't have your mail ID. You can uh, send me your mail ID. And okay, so okay, I'll forward it. So if there is no doubt, doubt yeah. should we conclude the class? <laughs> Last time one girl she was asking question, this time she is not there. Some of the students have well went for vaccination, so I think they will see the class. Oh, first, later. Oh, okay, okay, no problem. Mm.
Okay, then so we'll close the class now. Uh, sure, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shall I leave now? Yes, I'll end the class now. Okay, sure.